justice system, our education system, our welfare system. So we have to do something about these young people just like this young lady whose name I've forgotten about. And what we've done is Dr. Johnson indicated is tried to pass the Dream Act to allow young boys and girls to go to school. They should be able to go to school. They're not asking for anything. They only cut weights on their tuition. They just want to be able to go to state education, state educational institution. And they need to do that and we're going to make sure that that can be done. There's questions, I, I was, I was uh, talking to uh, right here, Pedro Medrano, I had a wonderful visit with him. Pedro, where are you? He's here somewhere, there you go. Uh, this man is a prominent world citizen. He's based in Panama and New York, he works for the United Nations. He was ambassador to a number of nations from Chile. Uh, and we were visiting about the need to do something about our immigration problems we have in America. And we really need to do that. I've spent more time in the last Congress on immigration, conference immigration reform, than any other issue we spent time on. We weren't able to get it over the finish line because one political party gave us no votes and that made it a little difficult. This is an issue that you can help with. You need to force the issue with the members of Congress from Nevada, and uh, two of them vote just two of them vote right, and two of them don't. Mm -hmm. You can figure out who that is. Uh, but we really need to get something done. Comprehensive immigration reform. Piecemeal reform usually doesn't work. We need to make sure that we can have secure borders. We all want secure borders. None of us are in favor of illegal immigration. We have to have secure borders on the north and in the south. With this state of insecurity we have with all the evil people in the world, we have to make sure we have secure borders. But also, we have to make sure that we have other programs that work well. We have to have temporary guest worker programs, and that's for more than just agriculture. We have to make sure that we have, for example, on the eastern shore, eastern shore of Maryland, every year they need guest workers to do their crabbing. Here in Nevada, there are times when we need work with our uh, recreation on now, hotels, we need help there. So we have to have a good temporary guest worker program. And we have lots of people here who are here who are undocumented. We don't know how many, but let's say 10 million. Now, if you listen to talk radio, their solution is send everybody back to the countries from which they came. That is not physically or financially possible. Can't be done. So what are we going to do? The best thing we can do is to bring these people out of the shadows so that they can become contributing members of our society, not be worried about going by one of their kids up some milk at a grocery store that they're going to be picked up and going to jail. Now, what our solution is, and the legislation we had, is that these people who are here that are undocumented should pay penalties and fines, stay out of trouble, work, pay their taxes, and learn English. So that should be now. Even if they do that, they don't go to the head of line, they go to the back line. Take them about 13 years. But at least their status would be changed and they would not be subject to deportation. That's what we need to do. Now, we also have to fix the laws that now exist. The employer sanctions does not work. It's a catch-22. It doesn't work for the employer. It doesn't work for the employee. We have to make a workable program. And with all the computerization we have and all walks for life, we can get that done. We have an e-verify program now. It is okay, but it's not good. It's not perfect. Let, let's say that that program is 98% accurate. Pretty good if you're one of the 98%. But if you're one of the 2%, it's really unfair. We have to do a much, much better job to make e-verify something that works and works well. And then finally, I already talked about the Dream Act. We need to have that part of our comprehensive immigration reform because it's the fair thing to do. But of course, if we were able to get the other things done, we really wouldn't need to worry about that very much. So, I'm so happy that you are all here. I really am grateful to you. The uh, things have changed in Nevada. Things have changed. Immigration has always been part of Nevada. 
It's just that now much more people do that and around the country. The color of the skin is different than it has been in the past. Waves of Irish and Germans and English and people from around the world are swept into America and made the country as good as it is. My father-in-law is from Russia. May he rest in peace. Uh, my grandmother from England, my mother-in-law, Lithuanian extraction. We're a country of immigrants. Immigration is one of the strengths of this country. A few years ago, a book was written, it was 15, 18 years ago, frankly, by James Fowles. <clears throat> the book was called More Like Us. He had, he was, he's a famous journalist, even today. He's been the publisher of US News World Report, Atlantic Monthly, and he's written a number of books. The book he wrote, More Like Us, was to turn on his, turn on his face the illusion, the thought that many Americans have, that for us to be successful in the years to come, we should be just like Japan. His book is, his book said, no, the name of it is More Like Us. <clears throat> and one of the major chapters in that book was the strength of America is immigration, always has been. And as a result of a number of things that have happened in the last uh, almost two decades, he has been proven to be right. Immigration is good for our country. And so I appreciate everyone being here, participating in this function here today. It's, a, it's something that uh, needs our attention. Let me close by something that's important for everyone, and that's health care reform. And there's no better example of that than a man in Reno who had a small restaurant. Name. His name was Jesus. He was married. He and his wife were blessed with a little baby girl. They learned immediately the baby had a cleft palate. And he had insurance in his restaurant. He felt good about that. So they did the surgery. And modern surgery with cleft palate is pretty easy. Yet, um, with rare exceptions, the babies turn out nearly perfect. And the baby's four months old. He goes and picks up his mail. And there's a letter there from his insurance company. And the letter says, too bad. We're not paying him the $90,000 debt. Why? Because they determined that this little baby had a pre-existing disability, a cut palate. Can you imagine that? So, Jesus is paying that dumb himself. We have to have immigration. We, we have to have health care reform. Just like we need comprehensive immigration reform, we need comprehensive health care reform. Why? I told you about Jesus, pre-existing disabilities. So they use it in chest and use it all the time as an excuse. But think about this picture. In the year 2008, about 750,000 Americans filed bankruptcy. That's a lot. 80% of the bankruptcies were caused by health costs. 70% of the 80% who filed for bankruptcy had health insurance. There's no country in the world where you get hurt or sick and you have to file bankruptcy other than our great bank. Why? Because the insurance companies are running our lives as it relates to health care. In America, there are only two businesses that are not subject to antitrust laws, Major League Baseball and insurance. You've got to change that. Harvard completed a study recently that said 45,000 people die every year in America because they have no health insurance. 